What is up guys, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Mop. But today we have a brand new Skyrim build for you guys and this isn't a remaster. No, this is all new content and we're incredibly happy with how it turned out. This build has so much potential that it can barely be contained in Skyrim but you'll learn a little bit more of that when we get into the role playing. On the topic of role playing, we have an awesome origin story in store which makes the role playing and every aspect of the playstyle that much more satisfying to experience firsthand. This is the Emperor. The Emperor may have noble blood, but he lived a full life of hardship and adversity. This life carved away all weakness and left behind a legendary soldier and a diplomat built to rule all of Tamriel. And the Emperor plans to do exactly that. He'll stop at nothing, taking every action needed to become the most powerful man not only in Skyrim, but in the entire continent. He'll be heavily involved in the politics of the civil war torn land of the Nords, using factions to his advantage, weakening the state of the Empire until he's ready to strike at the jugular. Nothing will stand in the way of the most ambitious mortal in Tamriel. Before we get into the build, don't forget that we've put timestamps in the description for your convenience. You can use these to help you navigate to whichever part of the video you may happen to need. But with that said, let's get straight into it with the Emperor's race standing stone and stats. The Emperor is a Nord and that means he can use his battle cry to send targets fleeing for 30 seconds. He also gets a 50% resistance to frost. Thanks to his hardy northern blood, he will also get a plus 5 booster block, one handed and speed speech, all of which will be a great help for the Emperor early on. Early on, the best stone to use is the Lover, as it will help him gain experience in all of his skill categories. After that though, because of his low armor rating, the Atronarch stone is a must for the 50% spell absorption. As for stat spread, take 80% health to keep you alive. As I said, he doesn't have much armor, so being tanky and having a high pain tolerance is quite important for this regal warrior. Then put 20% into stamina for endless power attacks, shield charges, shield bashes, and overall sprinting. The Emperor was born in the small rural town of Pell's Gate in central Cyrodiil, but his story starts before then. His mother may have been a lowly Nordic barmaid serving in one of the taverns in Coral, but his father was considerably more noteworthy. The Count of Coral was known for his often less than regal behaviour. He would often leave his keep in his luxurious bedchamber to spend time in the nicer inns of the city. While his wife, the Countess, warmed his bed at home, the Count was flirting with wenches as they served him in his hired tavern room. And one spring evening, the Emperor's mother brought the Count's meal and a tankard of ale to his room, only to be invited in by the Count who had far more than a warm meal on his mind. Several months later, one of the Count's advisors warned him of a particular Nordic wench who had become pregnant with his child, and rumours were beginning to spread throughout Coral. In a panic, the Count sees no solution but to have her conveniently disposed of to avoid the Countess from finding out, and also having a bastard child. Learning of the ploy through friends, the Nordic barmaid packed up her few earthly possessions and left the city, heading east. She eventually wound up in Pell's Gate, where she realised she simply couldn't go any further. Her stomach was enormous and it felt as though the child was going to burst out at any moment. The locals took pity on her and housed her until her son was safely delivered. From there, the former barmaid and her newborn son took up residence in a farmhouse, paying for their home by labouring on the owner's farm. The Emperor's mother had no intention of sharing the circumstances of his birth until he was old enough to handle the news in a mature fashion. She had only told the farmer. While his father lived in luxury, every comfort supplied and every whim humoured, the bastard son slaved away in the fields covered in muck and sweat. To make matters worse, he was bullied mercilessly by the other children of the town. While they all had poverty in common, the other kids had one thing he didn't, a father in the home. So in a cruel yet fitting fashion, they called him Bastard, and the Emperor could do nothing about it. When he reached adolescence, he finally worked up enough courage to confront his mother about his father's identity. As he toiled away in the field, he planned exactly what he would say to her. His anxiety over years of quiet pondering on the matter added to the gravity of the situation. It was late afternoon when he sat mulling on how to approach the confrontation. He'd been tilling the same bit of land for hours when the farmer ran to him. The farmer was run ragged and thoroughly out of breath as he tried to talk. The man's expression was full of panic and grief. His mother had been attacked by a pack of wolves on the outskirts of town. Nothing remained of her but a corpse torn to shreds. The Empress spent the next few weeks isolated in the farmer's house, afraid to return to his own home. Eventually, the farmer came to him to tell him the true circumstances of his birth. Maybe knowing who his father was would help him recover the will to live. This only angered the Emperor. His mother had given her life for him while his father didn't spare a thought for them. He had no intention of returning to Coral. Instead, he left Pearl's Gate behind. He didn't have the funds to facilitate travel across the land, so he joined up with the Imperial Legion. With them, he would get paid and see different parts of Tamriel. 
Eventually, he was given orders to report to the Legion in Skyrim, and when he arrived, he was placed in a squad tasked with tracking down and capturing Ulfric Stormcloak, the rebel leader. The search took him to the Jarrell Mountains on the border between Cyrodiil and Skyrim. A skirmish broke out in the harsh and heavy snows when they found him. The Emperor chopped down many Stormcloaks with his sword until only a few remained. He hit a rebel with his shield and heard a woman's cry in response. He was startled by the appearance of the woman. She was a true Nord, iron-willed, with hardened features and glorious golden hair. He stopped dead in his tracks. As he looked into her eyes, he saw that she was a spitting image of his mother. Another Imperial soldier moved in to kill the Nord woman, but the Emperor acted irrationally, jumped in her defense, and then killed him. The other Imperials detained the Emperor and threw him onto the back of the cart along with the rest of the captured Stormcloaks. He would face the chopping block like the treasonous bastard he was. The events following the Emperor's escape from Helgen is where things get interesting and he establishes his legacy. The Emperor was only motivated to join the Imperial Legion for the money and the chance of a fresh start. Aside from that, he had little love for the nobility of the Empire. And after leaving Helgen in one piece, this disdain magnified. After learning more about Ulfric's cause, he will begin to sympathize with the Stormcloaks. He will then become actively invested in helping them succeed in the Rebellion. After discovering the fact that he is Dragonborn, he will be inspired by conquerors of the past like Tiber Septim, known to the local as Talos. He will forge his own empire, led by a new line of dragonborn men. With him, the people will have someone worthy to root for, the revival of a dragonborn dynasty. He will use Ulfric's rebellion to his advantage, helping the Stormcloaks to break down the Empire's strength and making it ripe for conquer. Once the Imperials and the Thalmor are dealt with, he will be in the best position to take over Tamriel, much like Tiber Septim had in the past. Obviously, this attitude means he respects Talos and will support the Nord's freedom to support them. He will also want what's best for the Nords as he himself embraces his own heritage. All the more reason to destroy the Thalmor. He will focus on the civil war to make a name for himself as a warrior and a politician, then he will focus on the main story to spread the word of his divine powers, and then he will start to craft his empire, becoming the thane of every hold, purchasing every property, and building every hearth by a DLC house will be an important step to the Emperor's conquest. So for factions, you'll obviously want to do the civil war questline on the side of the Stormcloaks, the main story, and the Dragonborn DLC. Then you can absolutely side with the Dawnguard and the Dawnguard DLC, giving the people even more reason to follow you, and then the Companions Guild will give you powerful connections and even more validation that you are just as strong as the rumors suggest. Lastly, you can do the Bard's College questline too. This makes a lot of sense for an Emperor who will rely on his diplomatic skills. Now that we have a good understanding of the Emperor's backstory and roleplaying, let's get into how we'll want to play him in the game. The main skills for this build are one-handed blocking, chanting, and speech. We have made sure the Emperor is the very best at the skills which are crucial to his character, as he'll very much be showing off his Dragonborn powers using his abilities to inspire the support of the most powerful people in Tamriel, will want to use a fair few shouts. Feel free to use any or all of the shouts, but we'd say some of the coolest picks are Fire Breath, Dragon Aspect, and Ice Form. But with that sorted, let's get into the essential perks in each of his major skills. As a former soldier on the front lines of the Imperial Army, the Emperor got experience with a sword that many nobles would never get. He was dispensable and replaceable, so there was far more at stake when he drew his sword in combat. From the one-handed skill tree, take the middle branch up to Savage Strike. These perks are all that you'll need to rip and tear through pretty much any opponent you can't sway over with your diplomacy, and Savage Strike gives you plus 25% to standing power attack damage as well as the ability to behead enemies. Next up we have Block, the skill which quite literally goes hand in hand with the previous one for infantrymen like the Emperor. The only difference now is that the Emperor has the pick of the best shields in Skyrim. From the Block skill tree, go for everything. Quick reflexes will slow down time when you have your shield raised and someone power attacks you, allowing you to outplay your opponent, avoiding their very best attacks. With perks like Shield Charge, you'll also have offensive options with the shield raised. The Emperor doesn't dress like a common soldier. While that might be relatable to every man, it doesn't make him look particularly fit to rule the entire continent. No, instead the Emperor will spend his time in the finest robes and accruements. But in order to get away with this, his gear absolutely has to be enhanced with arcane enchantments. From the enchanting skill tree, we suggest taking the left branch and the middle branch. Extra effect is always a great choice for putting two enchantments on each item, but because the Emperor will need elemental resistances, fire, frost, and storm enchanter are well worth the investment too. Each of these improves enchantments of the corresponding elements by 25%. Lastly, but not least, we have the skill that separates the average military commander from the true ruler. We already know the Emperor can fight, but with a speech skill, we also know he can inspire loyalty and admiration from everyone he encounters. From the speech tree, we recommend taking the entire left branch. With these perks, the Emperor will be a god of the market, bartering like a pro. Having investor and master trader to invest in merchants for future gain is a perfect example of the Emperor's ability to create a thriving and sustainable economy. 
economy under his rule. And so with those skills, shouts and perks sorted, this is how the Emperor will play. Outside of battle, he will be the ultimate diplomat, increasing his political standing in Skyrim at every possible opportunity. In battle, he will be a simple, straightforward, gallant warrior. He fights like a disciplined soldier with the courage to lead an army from the front lines. Nothing provides morale to an army on the battlefield like the sight of their ruler taking an active role. The Emperor will enter battle behind powerful dragon shouts, sprinting with his shield raised in a shield charge. Then he'll bash with his shield and slash with his sword, only stopping to watch for incoming power attacks which he can swiftly dodge and counter. As for gear, the Emperor will wear noble clothes. These can be found in the East Empire trading area in the Solitude's docks. Along with this, hide braces and leather boots topped off with a golden ruby circlet, gold diamond necklace, and a gold and sapphire ring. Enchant all of this with enchantments like fortify one-handed magic resistances, fortify health, and elemental resistances. For weapons, get the blade's shield and the legendary weapon Dragonbane. If you'd like an alternative to Dragonbane, go for an enchanted blade sword. And that's it for this week's build, guys. Subscribe to Fodgem Output if you're new in town and give the video a like if you want to see more content just like this. Don't forget that the links can be found in the description to our social media accounts along with timestamps to help you navigate throughout each section of the video. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I'm Scott and I look forward to nerding out with you again in the next video.